It's June 17, 2017, and I am here today aboard Sequester, my Allied 36 catch. And I've just moved the boat from the marina, where I put it at the beginning of the season, to her mooring for the summer. And I did that because my power board, Tortuga, is going into the water tomorrow. And it stays at the marina for the summer. So, Sequester is hanging on her mooring and ready to go. And I'm just going to give a quick walk around on deck to show some of the features of this boat. As I said, the boat is a catch. You can see both masts here, the mizzen and the main forward. I have the boat rigged, rigged as what you might call uh, an extreme hybrid catch in that I do not have the main boom and main sail on board. There is one good reason for that, and that is that it's difficult to keep this boat into the wind when taking the mainsail down. And when I'm forward at the mast, I do not want to have the boat turn so that I'm on the lee side of the sail. And that's happened a lot of times. And it's a very scary situation when you're trying to pull a sail down and the wind is filling it and trying to push you over the side. So I tend to not do that. So anyway, let's look at the rest of the boat. I want to say that I have not done the varnish this year. I need to do some scraping and varnishing, so bear that in mind. Here we're looking at the cockpit. You can see to port there's a compass. To starboard is a Raymarine by data depth and speed indicator. It also gives water temperature. And down below there is a clinometer right under the companionway. And then the engine controls for the engine, which is a Westerbeek 46 diesel dating from 1987, but only has 1183.8 hours right now, and it is running well. Okay, let's look around the cockpit. You can see as we look down the starboard side, she's got teak cockpit combings. This and the surround on the companionway and the handrails are the only, is the only teak on deck. So let's take a look at these, uh, at this. Here's one of the primary winches. These are Anderson 40 ST winches, self-tailing winches. And I put those on about 10 or 12 years ago to replace the original Bariant 22 stainless steel winches that were on the boat. Bariant winch ratios are different than everybody else, so a 22 is about the same as a 40. This is one of the original Bariant 22s. It's on the cabin top, and if I had the mainsail on, this would be my main sheet winch right here. It's more than up to the job because this used to be one of the jib primaries. The only other thing about these Anderson 40s is that I have made a slight change to them from the way they came. And that is, I added electric drives. And right here, flip this up, is the control button to run the winches. So, although I always have a winch handle in the cockpit when I'm sailing, I almost never use it. But my thumb does get a little tired sometimes when I do a little bit of short tacking. Back here is an Anderson 12 self-tailor which has got my jib furling line led to it so that I can furl the jib with, the, uh, with that winch and control it. Then there's the aft end of the cockpit. And there's the wheel down there. It's a stainless steel wheel. You'll notice that it faces the opposite direction from most boats and that the shaft goes aft instead of forward into a pedestal. The reason for that is that Allied princesses were all equipped with worm gear steering, at least in the early boats, which this is number eight out of 140. And worm gear steering has a couple of advantages and a couple of disadvantages. The advantages are that it is completely bulletproof. It's almost impossible to break it. It's a solid bronze casting and very, very sturdy. The other 
advantage, if you will, is that there isn't a lot of feedback. That's also a disadvantage uh, from the rudder to the wheel. So once you set this uh, wheel in a particular spot, it tends to stay there until you turn it, which means that once you get the boat balanced up under sail, you can sail for a long time if the winds are steady without touching the wheel, which is good because this boat does not have an autopilot. Down there, just to the left of the wheel in this view, uh, is the manual bilge pump. There's also an automatic bilge pump in the bilge. Moving around, you can see mooring cleat. That white object is a GPS receiver slash heading sensor that sends information to the chart plotter. And another winch. And we'll move back to the aft corner of the boat. And you can see in the cockpit is the mizzen mast. Here's the mizzen sail. It's a very easy sail to handle. Just uh, pull it up. It takes just a couple of seconds to pull it up. Never leave the cockpit. And uh, you're ready to go. Usually what I do when I come out to go for a sail is I come out of here at the mooring. I would raise the mizzen before I drop the mooring. And that'll keep the boat into the wind. And drop the mooring. Well, I can use the mizzen by pushing it out to one side or the other to turn the boat in whichever way I want so that I can then unroll the jib and be underway. From the time I get on the boat until I'm sailing, if, it can be as little as three or four minutes. And I often don't start the engine when I'm leaving the mooring. Okay, and there's the companionway with the Dodger. I need to get new windows for the Dodger, or at least clean them. Well, let's walk up the starboard side. You can see the main sheet for the, the sheet for the Genoa and the furling line down there. The smaller line is the furling line. The next thing we come to is this little chrome thing on the cabin top. That is the exhaust slash intake vent for my Dickinson P12000 propane fireplace. It draws in combustion air from the bottom of that bell and the exhaust gases come out the top. So it does not use cabin air for combustion. Then there are the handrails which are mirrored by handrails inside the cabin and solar panels. I started out I didn't know much about solar at the time, so I started out with a single 20 watt solar panel and then decided that, that uh, it worked nicely, but I needed a little more, so I added a second 20 watt solar panel. One advantage of not having the main boom and mainsail on the boat is that most of the time, although not always, the solar panels are in pretty good sun. Right now they're being shaded a little bit by the mast as the boat swings. And we walk forward. Here's the forward hatch over the V-berth. It's old, but it doesn't leak, and it's functional. Up forward, all the way. I've got a Lumar electric windlass with a manual backup. I have the handle back aft. Two deck cleats. The boat originally came with a single aluminum deck cleat. You can see the four white spots there are where the screws for the deck cleat uh, penetrated the deck. Those holes have been filled with epoxy and then it's just a little gel coat over them. And eventually I'm going to do some work on this foredeck and repaint it, which is why I haven't done anything. But the windlass is there and going forward from the windlass, got the chain. It's got an all chain road. I've got about 250 feet of chain and just a second. If it comes back up, a harbor porpoise just swam by in front of the boat. See if it's going to pop back up over here. Yeah, it was a little one, so we probably won't be able to see it. Oh well, let's get back to the boat tour. I've got, I replaced the single aluminum 12 inch cleat with two 15 inch heavy duty stainless steel cleats. These cleats are through bolted to stainless steel backing plates below the deck and uh, if they come off they're going to take the whole foredeck with them which is highly unlikely. 
And up here, we've got the primary anchor, which is a Danforth plow anchor, a 35 pound Danforth plow. You don't see too many of those around. I don't think they sold very many. It's basically Danforth's version of a CQR. And then I've got my roller furler. Wait till the wind stops a little bit. It is a Hood Sea Furl SL that I put on the boat in 1997. It works perfectly, although I have periodically had to rebuild it. I've replaced all the bearings, I've replaced a couple of extrusions, etc. And, and kept it in good working condition. And it does work as a furler. You can partially furl the sail with it and sail, although sail shape suffers tremendously. Heading back aft. On the cabin top here, uh, I can see I haven't hooked up the electrical for the mast yet, but I will. I've got a what used to be a Durad event. I took the cowl off. That goes into the head, and it, would it tended to blow air into the head, and sometimes you don't want forced air ventilation going into the head. So I put a Nicro day-night solar vent on there with the solar panels in it, and that is set up to exhaust air out of the vent, out of the head continuously 24 hours a day and then going forward we have another nicro day night solar vent also set up for exhaust which goes down into the main salon and there's the dodger i get around the shroud here when i originally bought the boat and i think all allied princesses did not have midship cleats so I installed on either side these uh, anodized aluminum midship cleats. They're through bolted with a quarter inch stainless steel backing plate that's about 10 inches long down there uh, into below the tow rail. The boat used to have teak tow rails or at least teak trim on top of the tow rails but a few years ago I took it off because it had been sanded so many times that the bungs were falling out and it was leaking around the screws. So I took the tow rail off, fiberglassed up all the screw holes, and painted the tow rail. And then put these cleats on. Okay, that pretty much goes over the tour of the boat. I have 150% jib, which is my primary sail. It's about 370 square feet. And back here, the mizzen sail is 94 square feet. So I have about or 464 square feet of sail when I have full sail up. And that is plenty to push the boat along. Last weekend, we were out sailing and in about 15 to 18 knots and we got the boat up to 7.3 knots which for a full keel 36 foot sailboat with a 27 foot water line is moving right along. So you can see she's set up here. Oh one other thing I should mention is way up here on the mizzenmast is the radar. That is a Lowrance broadband radar which goes to a Lowrance chart, chart plotter. And with the heading sensor, which I mentioned earlier, I can do radar overlay on the chart. Okay, I'm gonna be getting off the boat now. I have to go do some other work. And from after that, on the way out, I will stop and take a shot to show you the whole boat from the water. Before I leave the boat, I want to mention the dinghy. This is the hard dinghy I built a few years ago uh, with my friend Hank Hinckley. This is a Great Harbor 10 yacht tender. It's got all mahogany trim. It's a 10 foot fiberglass dinghy, rows beautifully. And I am about to row the quarter mile back to the marina. Okay, here's Sequester from the water. 
I'm uh, not in the dinghy because my friend Shane came by in a brand new Hinkley jet boat and offered to give me a ride in. So I'm sitting, standing in the cockpit of the Hinkley jet boat. Here's Shane running the boat and we will head into the marina to say goodbye to Sequester for another day. I'm back at the marina now in Tortuga's Slip. This is where the boat will be tomorrow by about 12.30. They're my neighbor. And here comes Shane on the jet boat. He gave me a ride in. He's going to swing it into the dock and tie it up. There he goes. These boats handle very nicely with the jet stick drive, which allows you to use a basically a joystick to control the boat. He's going to back it in, stop it, and then just slide it sideways to tie it up. And that's that. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, along with this little add-on of a brand new, not yet painted or finished, Hinkley jet boat that's in the water for sea trials.